So now I'm going to go ahead and talk about query strings and query parameters and how they are used in backend development and how we can actually use them ourselves. So many of you may have seen something at the end of the website address. So in the browser uh, address URL, you might see this question mark and then you might see something like key equals value. And then you might see an ampersand symbol and you might see another key equals value. This is known as a query string. So right over here, this question mark symbol denotes that we have a query string and they go at the end of our uh, define route over here. Okay, so you have the domain and then the route, the path, and then the query string at the end. And then after the question mark, you basically just pass in whatever key value pairs you want. So for example, I have uh, a key called key and I use the equals operator to assign a value to it. So it's kind of like assigning a value to a variable, but only we're doing it in the address bar. So key equals value. And if I wanted more query parameters in the query string, I can just simply use this ampersand as a delimiter. So ampersand and then the next key value pair. So key two equals value two. I can have as many query parameters as I want. Now there are different ways that you can use query parameters in web development. You can send query parameters from a page to another page on the client side. So that way you can send data uh, across different pages. So let's say if one page needs data from another page, when you're navigating, then you can grab the values from the query, query string. If you're sending it from the client side to the server side, typically you would send a query string to uh, add additional data to the request that you normally wouldn't add in a request body. We haven't gone to post requests just yet, but I'll stick to a get request as an example. So when you make a get request, remember that you are performing a request, an HTTP request to get data in read only format. You're not manipulating any data at all on the server side. So sometimes you might need to retrieve the data, but you also want to have that data already um, manipulated in a certain way on the server side. So for example, up top over here, I added a couple more user objects. So let's say I have this user array and let's pretend it's from the database. And let's say I want all of these users returned back, but I wanted it sorted in alphabetical order based on the username, or you can also have it sorted based on the display name. Maybe you might also want it sorted in um, from least to greatest based on the ID value since these IDs are integers. So you would use a query string to do that. Let's say if you also want to filter out some results from the users itself, maybe you don't want to get every single user from the database. You only want to get only specific users that match where their username matches a substring. So maybe I only want to get all the users that have an A in their username field. So hopefully that makes sense with query parameters and how they can be used. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually send query strings and query parameters to our server. So inside my slash API slash users route inside the request handler function, I'm going to go ahead and console log this request dot query object. Remember how I said earlier, the request object has everything that you can possibly get in regards to the request itself. So Earlier, we referenced request.params to get the route parameter. So to get the query parameters from the query string, we just reference request.query. So let's go ahead and send a query string when we are making this request to the slash users endpoint. So I'm going to use the question mark symbol and then provide some key value pairs. I can literally pass any key value pair I want. So let's do something like filter. And we'll assume the filter is going to be based on username. Um, so I'll do filter uh, Anson. And I'll go into my console. Uh, let me actually just rerun the request. So you see how whenever I send a request, a get request to that endpoint, in the console, it logs that request query object. And it has the filter, which is the key that I passed in, the query parameter filter. It is showing up as a field in that object, that query object. And we have the 
uh, string Anson as the value. So the query string gets parsed into a JSON object by Express, so we can very easily grab the values. Let's go ahead and actually do something realistic with the filtering. So what I'll do is this. I want to make it so that I can filter based on sub some substring. So I want to go ahead and also make it so that I can also set which field in this mock users array in, in these objects. I want to make sure I can set which field I want to filter on. So maybe I want to alternate between filtering by username or display name. So for the filter value, we can expect it to only be two possible values, username or display name. And this will tell us what uh, key in the user object, what field to filter by, or yeah, what, what field to filter. And then we will add an additional query parameter. You can call it whatever you want, but I guess we can call it a value just to keep things simple. And then this value will basically be the, uh, the text the substring that you want to have that username contain. So if I want to filter everything where it contains the an substring, so an substring, then we will have to search for that. Okay, so I'm going to send these two query parameters to the server. Okay, so now I'm going to go into, go back to the request handler for the user's endpoint. And what I'll do is this, I'm going to destructure that query object from the request object. And then I also want to destructure from the query object, the two query parameters, filter and value. And I can do that all in one go like this. So I can use, so after query, I can additionally destructure properties from query. So let's do filter and value. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that both of these query parameters exist because of course, if they don't exist, then we're not gonna do any filtering at all. So the easiest case that we can handle is we check to see if both of these values are undefined because if they are, then we don't need to do any filtering. We can just return mock users as is. So we'll you write an if case. If there's no filter and there's no value, then we will just simply return response.send and then call or not, not call, uh, pass in mock users in this dot send method call. Okay, that's the easiest case. I'll write a simple comment when filter and and value are undefined. Okay. And we always want to make sure that both of these query parameters are defined because you need both of them, of course. You can't have a value and not know what field in the user object you want to filter by. And if you have the filter query parameter defined, you need to make sure you have an actual text that you want to filter, uh, that you want to filter based on. So we need to make sure that both of these are defined. So we'll do if filter and value, if filter and value, we will return and we'll call response.send. And from here, I should just be able to write a simple filter function. So mock users, I can use the filter function on the array and pass in a predicate. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in this callback function, also known as a predicate function. And this will, this callback function has uh, the user as an argument. And then what we want to do is we want to filter out all of the, we want to filter all the user objects that match, that have that value as a substring. So it's pretty easy. We can do user.username, because remember we're filtering by, uh, by the username. Or actually it would be user square brackets filter, okay? And this is assuming that filter would either be display name or username. So user filter, so this would grab the correct field and then we would want to, so this is a, this is going to be a string. So we would want to make sure we check to see if the string contains that substring. So we actually have this, um, includes, and this method returns true. If search string appears as a substring of the result of converting this object to a string. Okay. So I can pretty much call dot includes and I'll pass in the value. So this will filter all of, this will basically grab all of the user objects that pass this predicate. So if the user and whether we are filtering by username or display name, if let's say, for example, let's stick with username. 
if the username includes the value that we're trying to filter, then it's going to return that into a new array. And then once all of the filtering is done, we're going to send the entire array back. So let's go ahead and test this out. So right now, if I let's do this, if I don't have any of the query primers at all, you can see that it will just return the array as is. Okay, it doesn't uh, it doesn't do anything. We have everything sorted. We have everything the way it is. Nothing is sorted. Nothing is done. Let's go ahead and add a filter. So filter. Let's filter by username. And now notice how if I were to only have the filter, but no value, you'll see how it doesn't return anything yet. The request is still pending. That's because we need both filter and value. Okay. We'll handle these cases as well. So let's go ahead and handle the case where we have both filter and value as a query parameter. So for the value query parameter, I will set this to be a N. And now you'll see this will grab me all of the user objects where the username has a N as a substring. And if you look right over here, it seems to be filtering correctly. Uh, I can go ahead and do another simple case where let's filter the username where it includes E as a substring. And you can see that it seems like the only username that I have that has an E as a substring is Henry. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Let's try, um, let's try A. I have one, two, three, four, five. So it's missing, uh, this object, Henry. So our filtering is working great. Okay. Well, so let's just finish this out. Um, so let's make sure we handle all the other cases where if we don't have both of these, um, oh, both of these defined, then we return the same mock users that is in memory. So we don't do any filtering at all. So I think the easy thing to do is actually this, instead of, uh, doing this, if check right up here, where we check both a filter and uh, where we check if there's no filter and there's no value. What we'll do is we'll check if there's a filter and if there's a value. And if this condition fails, and that means it only has one or the other defined or both are undefined. So then we'll just return response.send mock users. So I just realized that so I'm going to fix that real quick. And now when I go back to the browser, if I only have one query parameter, it won't do any filtering at all. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense.